Gambia is witnessing its biggest anti-government protests in more than 15 years. A crackdown against the opposition and a suspicious death of an activist have sparked anger. So as Gambians head to the polls later this year, we ask, what's causing the unrest? This is Inside Story. Welcome to the program. I'm Deddy Nabugeda. It's rare for Gambians to take to the streets and show their disapproval of the government. President Yahya Jame has ruled the small West African nation for more than 20 years. He's a leader known to be intolerant of dissent. But his government's reaction to a rally held a week ago has outraged Gambians. Dozens of opposition activists were arrested. One of them, Solo Sandeng, he's the secretary of the opposition United Democratic Party, is thought to have been killed while in police custody. These exclusive pictures obtained by Al Jazeera show security forces rounding up protesters. It happened in the suburbs of the capital Banjul on Saturday. Now, after the death of Sandeng, the leader of the opposition party, Osaino Darbo, was also arrested. His current location isn't known, but it's thought he's being held at Gambia's notorious Mile 2 prison. Before we bring in our guests, Al Jazeera's Nicholas Haag reports from the Senegalese Gambian border. The protest took place just 30 kilometers down this road across the Senegal Gambia border. Few have managed to report inside the Gambia, such is the level of control of information the state holds. Now, despite what international organizations describe as gross human rights violations, such as the stifling of freedom of speech, um, arbitrary detention and torture by security forces of the Gambia, Gambian opposition activists are determined to get their voices heard and continue their protest movement. They're protesting for electoral reform ahead of the presidential elections expected to take place December 1st. Now, this is the fifth elections taking place since Yahya Jame came to power back in 1994, 23 years ago. The United Nations has condemned these arrests and have asked Gambia to release all opposition activists. Gambia says those protests were illegal. Today, protesters will appear in court and Gambians will be keeping a close watch to see who among the opposition leaders appearing in court are missing. Nicholas Hawk, Inside Story, Kerrang, at the Senegal-Gambia border. Well, Gambia's information minister has said that he had no clue if the detained opposition protesters had died in custody or where others were being detained, but asserted the demonstrations were illegal. Sheriff Bojang told the AFP news agency, this is Gambia, we have rules and laws governing us, and one of the laws states that before you embark on such a thing, you must seek and obtain a permit from the police, and that wasn't done in this case, and they were dispersed and detained. Gambia is one of Africa's smallest countries, known as a popular tourist destination that attracts thousands of visitors to its Atlantic coastline resorts. And unlike some of its West African neighbors, it's been relatively stable politically. Stability, though, has not translated into prosperity. Nearly half of Gambia's population lives in poverty. Let's now get the thoughts of our guests. Joining me here in the studio in Doha is uh, Aliu Manjang. He's a PhD candidate at Qatar University. Over in Dakar via Skype, Sharif Bojang Jr. He's a journalist and a blogger. Welcome to both of you to Inside Story. Aliu, why are the protests happening now in Gambia? Uh, thank you very much. Um, I think uh, we have to reflect back to so, um, 1990. Uh, for when the uh, current regime came to place. Um, in that particular moment, um, um, President Yajime made a lot of promises. Um, be, um, part of that promise is to take a uh, root and leave uh, reform of the government and, and bring in people who are believed to be involved in the, um, um, economic crimes to justice um, uh, and also uh, to restore the stolen public money. And now I think Gambians are, are using that promise uh, um, to assess the, the performance of the current regime, which I think is not in line with that uh, 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 promise. But what is it you think that started these protests? I mean, these promises you speak of were made more than two decades ago by the president. So why is this happening now? I mean, I mean a lot of factors are responsible for these protests. And you know, they, they act together and they build up 
uh, the anger and the frustration of the uh, Gambian people about the regime. Uh, part of this is the economic structure of the uh, country. Uh, Gambia uh, is a tax-based country and in recent years we have seen uh, increment in taxes that didn't go in parallel with increment in, in, in salaries and also um, uh, alleged government involvement in the business um, as well as foreign discouragement of foreign direct, direct investment that has been a very important part of Gambian economy as well as decentralization policy which discourage agricultural development which is the backbone of gov government sorry Gambian economy also I mean to build up the economic um, uh, malfunctioning in the Gambia and that's demonstrated and reflected in the anger and the frustration of people but I think there are also immediate factors that are also uh, uh, responsible for this part, part of it, um, the recent border closure uh, um, between Gambia and, and, and Senegal. Gambians are much in, uh, depending on the re-export of goods and commodities from Senegal. Uh, part of this um, uh, material, um, uh, um, building materials and, 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 and also like crude oil and people, there is report of um, lack of electricity uh, in this. These are all factors that have uh, built the frustration of Gambia against the regime. And I think oppositions, you know, know the situation. They try to exploit that, uh, uh, that momentum and they took into the streets and in, in a bid to win the, the acceptance and the, um, uh, the confidence of people. Uh, Sharif Bojang Jr., speaking of the opposition, we have uh, seen this uh, reportedly massive crackdown on the opposition in Gambia, and there are reports that senior opposition members have been arrested, and we were just reporting also that there have been reports of the death of uh, one of the opposition uh, members, Solo uh, Sandang. What will the opposition do next? Well, I'm not sure what the, I think it's a waiting game for now. Um, the opposition leader, as you know, Hussein Odabo is in custody. Um, several other of his executive members are in custody. Some other people are in custody. These are just ordinary members of the opposition United Democratic Party. And um, this report that some people that at least one person died in, in custody as a result of torture and brutality from the security forces, um, I think this leaves a lot of, you know, anger, a lot of doubt, a lot of frustration. And unless the government produce these people who are said to have died in prison, I think it's going to, whatever happens, whether there is a court case or whatever the government stand will create more questions than answers and to add to what my compatriots have just said about this, some of the reasons that propel this um, protest by the opposition I agree with him on these points you know it has gone back but then but I what, want to what stress would be the, the consequences of this crackdown on the opposition Well, the consequences is that I think it is more of what the Gambia has to win from this than the consequences, because I don't think it can get worse than that as this as long as far as the government is concerned. We've seen on Thursday when these protesters took, the first protesters, when they took to the streets, I mean, it's a peaceful protest, and the police use force, heavy-handedness, to clamp down on them, using buttons to beat people up, and then this is as a result of that um, we, we have, we've been having reports of deaths. On Saturday, we've seen a different tone. The opposition leader led the, you know, the protest, protesters, his party members. We didn't see the police doing the same thing, for example, beating the opposition leader. They had their buttons, but they didn't do that because I think finally they've come to the realization that Gambians are up and they are up to protest for their rights. You cannot take them for granted. If you use buttons and guns and stuff to suppress people against, you know, just protesting peacefully and calling for not even a regime change, but for electoral reforms some more people are going to go but i think are going to the street to protest so i think the lesson learned from this for now is that you cannot suppress the rights of the people and expect them to go down on the ground for you it's no longer going to happen let me ask you about uh, the reports that we've been mentioning sharif about uh, solo sandang the uh, the secretary of the opposition party uh, apparently reports saying that he's been tortured to death while in detention and uh, Amnesty International saying that, in fact, according to information that it's received, do you see any process of accountability playing out here? 
Well, I'm not sure um, of that because in consideration of the fact that in the past we have issues like this, April 10, 11, 2000, we, you know, the last time we had such mass protests, citizen protests in the streets of um, Banjul and its environs, people died. They were not accounted for. The government failed to own up to its responsibility. We've had the disappearance of a journalist and then the government failed, of, you know, failed to take its responsibility. Another journalist murdered. The government failed to take responsibility. So the big issue here, first of all, is that, you know, we need to verify 100 percent that Solo Sandeng had died in prison. If that is confirmed, then we come to the next stage. And that is what is the government going to say about this? But I can assure that this issue, this time, things will be different because he was arrested. In the past, especially in the case of a missing journalist, the government said they had no idea of it. They, they were not responsible for the arrest of these journalists. But then this time, Solo Sanding was arrested in public, you know, in broad daylight. There are video footages of it. So the government cannot claim that it is not responsible for his arrest, in contrast to what the information minister had you well, know, yeah, said. Well, yeah, what the, the information BBC minister was saying, media. Sharif uh, and Aliou, is that uh, he has no clue if the detained opposition protesters had died in custody or where others were being detained. He's also saying that the demonstrations were illegal. Does he have a point, uh, Aliou? Well, I, um, you know, um, the, the situation in, in Gambia is tense as, at, at, um, at the moment. Um, they, for, ex for sure, um, the minister would, 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 uh, would talk in the interest of the government. And uh, definitely we have conflicting reports about the number of people arrested and whether, in fact, Solo Sanding um, is dead in the custody um, because what government is saying is, is contrary to what is being uh, um, propagated by um, other I mean, online newspapers uh, in, in, uh, in the Gambia and, and abroad. So um, at, at this moment, we have to see... How difficult is it to get information out of Gambia? Well, I think um, in recent years we have been seeing a crackdown on the uh, journalists, uh, both local and international media. Um, people are not um, international media have rare access to information uh, in the Gambia. But I think now that's no longer an issue there because we have lots of uh, online um, um, online radios in, in diaspora. Um, more than 10 or 11 radio, and they have access to Gambia through um, the assigned, you know, known, I mean, informal journalists who provide them with information. And also now we have seen kind of population in number of satellite days uh, which uh, Gambians have in their possession, and they are able also to connect to um, like external or true Senegal uh, media, uh, which are also uh, very much in the extent coverage of what is happening in, 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 in Gambia, uh, because the, the border is fluid and it's, much, it's, it's very easier for them to go and, and have what they want without being um, an intercepted by the government. Sharif, for you as a journalist, is it difficult to verify information coming out of the country? It is very difficult to verify any information from the Gambia because what is happening is in order to verify information from the people on the ground, they themselves need to be informed first. But the Gambia, there's no independent journalism. People who tried, attempt, including, of course, the information minister, who is also the owner of the Standard newspaper. When the last time he was very critical of the Gambia government, the Gambian government, his newspaper was shut down, was closed. They a few times, at least twice, for, 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 for being, you know, for being independent, for being tough. So, you know, this this is a very difficult situation. People are there are those journalists who try to, to tell the truth, you know, to report as it is their shutdown. So what we are having in this situation, once again, throughout this incident is that we have our families in the Gambia and they were relying on us. Isn't it ironic? Outside the Gambia, my friends, my families, my colleagues, everybody rely on me outside the Gambia to tell them what is happening in the Gambia because there is no free flow of information. The government has shut down all sources of information. And if you want to permit me, I want to elaborate on the, your, your question to Ali on the you know, question of the information minister not being aware of it. I mean, here is a government minister, the spokesperson of the government, who's been coming out all these days to speak on behalf of the government, to react to allegations and assumptions and everything. But when the question came to you that are you aware that we, and solo sending you know was arrested in the first place I would I was expecting the answer would be yes or no 
But I mean, there was a lot of hesitation, and that goes to so the kind of government we have in place. If you are, if you don't even prepare your spokesperson to tell the world what is happening, and he is in the dark, the same way everybody is, I don't think that is a government that we want to continue in the Gambia. Well, speaking of the government, there are upcoming elections on you later uh, this year, and there is the point of view. Some are saying that this particular case of Sandang highlights the fact that uh, the government will perhaps be intensifying its crackdown on opposition, on any independent voices ahead of those elections in December. Do you agree with that? Do you no, think I, that is going to happen? No, I think government will be uh, will be cautious about what will be uh, what it will be doing next after what we have seen. Uh, in recent days. Um, as I told you, a lot of factors are playing here because um, if you look at the situation in Gambia, the, 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 the popularity of the regime is dec uh, declining and uh, severely. Um, and one part of this is because of some of, of his uh, foreign policy um, um, approach. Uh, we have seen recently, uh, recent, in recent years, you know, Gambia has been withdrawn from Commonwealth. And uh, also, um, you know, um, Gambia is uh, developing antagonizing relations with Senegal. Um, um, for a few months ago, uh, like last year, uh, in late 2015, uh, the president was talking, you know, uh, sarcastically about uh, Senegalese uh, previous president. And this is something that has, you know, contributed negatively in the popularity of the government. Also, put, talking about the, the popularity, we have to also understand the, the effect of illegal migration on the government regime because the fact that people, Gambians, are going outside in mass, it means that there is something wrong with the government inside. So all this government is aware of this, and in order to tempt, uh, tab, uh, uh, tamp the, the, uh, the, the tension of people, I think it will be more cautious now to deal with the, any potential demonst demonstration because people are in a position, I mean, to um, to go against the, the regime at the moment. Uh, Sharif, do you agree with that? Do you think the government is going to be more cautious ahead no. of out of the elections? Yeah, for this, I beg to disagree with Aliu on uh, the fact that um, the the for the government to be cautious ahead of the election and during election, we can only base it on an assumption, thinking that things will be different. But I want to say that there is no physical evidence and historical evidence whatsoever to show that President Jame and his regime will change, you know, their tone or even the way they, 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 they deal with the opposition and dissenters and critics. We've seen over and over and over these things happening. And then I want to stress the fact that in the midst of all these, you know, protests, arrests, allegations of torture and deaths. When the president arrived from Istanbul in Banjul, you know, a few days ago, and this question was put to him, you know, all of a random, at random, he said, and I quote, the Gambia's national security will not be left in the hands of dogs. He didn't mention the opposition, but he has always been calling the opposition, especially the main opposition, United Democratic Party, as dogs. So you, you're not even sensitive to what is happening in the country, and you still mention this dog thing. And that shows the kind of government we have in place. And there is no evidence to show that, you know, the treatment of the opposition and the way he deals with the opposition and critics will be different. Aliyu, what is the role of ECOWAS here? And I ask you about ECOWAS because in 2011, the last elections that took place in Gambia, ECOWAS refused to send a team to the country, saying uh, that there was intimidation of the opposition and of the electorate. So with these upcoming elections, what should the role be for ECOWAS? Well, uh, what I know is that Gambia's relations in, with ECOWAS is not in the good terms. You know, when you remember that um, uh, President Yajeme was refused to lead the, the, the regional bloc uh, when there was a, um, a summit in Abidjan, I, I can't remember the, the year. And also, um, um, yeah, the, yeah, uh, the president was against uh, consensus when people, uh, when the, the, the members talk about pres presidential limit. Gambia was one of the countries who refused that. And uh, just recently, we have seen ECOWAS um, delegation being to Gambia to discuss the border issue. So we can see that you know uh, there is kind of frust frustration with the uh, development in Gambia, in political, I mean, domestically and uh, and, and uh, uh, externally from the side of uh, ECOWAS. Um, I, I would not be surprised if they didn't come. So if they don't come 
come to um, um, supervise the, the uh, next year election. But I think they are watching closely what is happening in Gambia as at the moment in, uh, um, in concurrent with what also other regional and international organizations are doing because we have heard from the Ban Ki-moon and other uh, uh, human rights um, organization talking about the development in the Gambia. And I think um, without um, uh, ECWAS, it's not ec uh, expected, uh, except exempted from um, this uh, uh, development. So um, definitely uh, they are uh, um, following the development um, to see to see the, whether they will be in, in, in on the ground to supervise the election is, is, is a question that has to be answered now. And uh, uh, Sharif, for the European Union, which has traditionally been Gambia's biggest donor of foreign aid, now we know that in 2014, the EU did cut off 13 million euros that it was giving uh, to the country, saying at the time they attributed that decision to the lack of progress on human rights issues and the human rights concerns they had when it come to, came to Gambia. So how effective, though, is this policy or has this policy been of holding up aid to try and sway the government to improve uh, their human rights records? Well, once again, uh, we can expect that it will hit the government. The fact that the EU can take this turn to push the Gambia to, 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 to be more tolerant, especially to its critics and opponents, to you know allow free speech, free assembly, and to allow people to exercise their rights. The EU, as you said, is one of the Gambia's you know, development partners, biggest development partners, has always been one of the Gambia's development partners. And the fact that the EU can withdraw some money that they, they, they I mean, this is a huge amount of money you know, to Gambia. And as far as the quest to develop the Gambia is concerned, as the president has been trumpeting all these years. So this is a big setback for us. The fact that the European Union can withhold you know, money that they suppose, you know, supposed to go into a lot of projects in the Gambia. But let's also bear in mind that um it might it's going to hit the Gambia if the EU you know come up with much stronger other than the press releases and condemnations on papers and online and all those things if the EU decide to go further than that it will hit the Gambia but I'm not sure that it is going to hit the Gambia at such a magnitude that it is going to force you know President Jammeh to even make major changes in the Gambia for example because he's and he said this a few days ago when he came to the to the country from Istanbul where he went you know in Turkey where he went to attend the organization of islamic um, conference you know meeting there and then he said he boasted that the gambia throughout his tenure you know the biggest uh, donors and partners turned their back on the gambia he made reference to that and he said the gambia has been developing and it's been surviving and thanks to other partners for example We've seen recently he swayed diplomatic relations from um, Taiwan to China, and of course it's about money. And the announcement that the next OIC, Islam, Organization of Islamic Conference, will be held in the Gambia, and he talked about money, the wealth of these people, the wealth of the Arab world, you know, and stuff. And he is expecting that that will be a bumper harvest for the Gambia as far as money and you know and and, and finances are concerned. So it will the EU condemnation, the EU action, further action, any action the EU will take will hit the Gambia but I don't know I, I'm not sure it will hit, hit it to the magnitude of Jame changing major making major policy changes in the country uh, do you agree with that Ali? and what needs to be done for uh, these policy changes to take place in Gambia that the people uh, request well I, th I, I echo him when he talked about the foreign policy shift you know uh, we have seen that in the Gambian foreign policy pattern, um, the president has been um, 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 propagating this anti-imperialist, and that also forced Gambia to ally with anti-Western regimes like Libya, um, Iran in the Amhandijan term, and also Venezuela, Cuba. But then, you know, for some reason, Gambia have co diplomatic relations with most of these countries, and now trying to look for alternative partners. And part of it now, we have seen Gambia has uh, developed relations with. Uh, Russia and also with uh, uh, China. So I think what um, uh, Mr. Mr. Boja is saying that is quite true. I mean, and uh, um, Gambia is trying to expand its foreign relations, but um, in order to secure um, um, uh, uh, resources that has been cut from Gambia by other Western partners due to the um, what is being perceived as uh, um, uh, uh, lack of good governance in 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 in, in Gambia. So I, I think that's that's true. But what would what uh, the government should do now um, in order to uh, uh, 
uh, you know, tempt the, the situation also has to do, you know, um, trying to, you know, reach out to the to the nation and, and understand and make them understand what is happening on the ground. I think it's no longer workable, you know, to cut information from people or the, because they have alternative sources of information. And I think, you know, it, taking that from against Gambia is going to be detrimental to the government. Okay, uh, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much uh, to my guests, uh, Aliou Manjang and uh, Sharif Bojang Jr. Thanks for joining us. And thank you for watching the program. You can always see the show again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. You can also have a further discussion by going to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From myself and the whole team here in Delha. bye-bye for now.